what he's going to say was, I'm going to keep this short because he is. <laughs> so, uh, at least you may get faux pas. <laughs> My comments also will be concise, although I wish they didn't have to be. I can, because I can tell you that my admiration for the guy that we are here to help is really limitless, and I would like to go on at length. But you wouldn't be here if you didn't know all this, and so I will not belabor the obvious. I will not tell you things you already know. I will tell you that uh, I have disciplined myself never to take for granted for a moment having Richard Murdoch as our partner. I mean, his office is very, very important. Um, and it has been in um, friendly hands since I got here. But uh, it doesn't take too much imagination for me to imagine how difficult life could be and how much uh, less well served the people of Indiana would be if we didn't have Richard there now. And uh, so I don't um, take it for granted for a moment, and I hope you don't either. We uh, have learned a lot about Richard. We know he is a great steward of the public trust and all the important ways that a treasurer of state must be. Um, but we also learned something further about him. It wasn't a revelation to me, but we saw it demonstrated in an incredibly emphatic way. I was sitting in a uh, very interesting meeting. I don't go to Washington, D.C., except <laughs> or whether it's just a, it's just unavoidable. I don't care for the place. But I uh, I had an invitation I didn't miss. It was a gathering of people, very coincidental. It was a gathering of people, many of whom you have seen on television and know very very well, or know of very very well. And the day was spent talking about you know is America on the ropes. Uh, this is in the spring of this year when the, uh, when the full dimension of the current administration's desire to grow the state at the expense of the private sector had become obvious. So I'm sitting there and uh, learning more than I'm not providing and listening much more than I'm talking, and I get a message to talk to Richard. And the question is, uh, and only he and I can decide this, are we going to roll over for the overthrow of 200 years of law, rule of law in this country, uh, and allow the federal government to strip with no authority at all away the rights of secured creditors in order to make a political payoff to their allies in the case of crisis. I had gotten a couple of phone calls from the White House explaining all the reasons we should just sign up to this thing and politely said, I don't think so. You know, our pensioners have rights. They should be paid first. Please just do what the law requires. Richard was calling to say they're not going to do that. And we can just surrender or we can be the only people, the only entity to... Uh, protest. And uh, there wasn't any doubt in his mind what was the right thing to do. And uh, we agreed to that. I went back and I told, again, this is people like George Will and, uh, well, many other very recognizable names. I said, there's a guy named Murdoch you guys keep an eye out for. And let me tell you what his view of this is. I'm very satisfied in the end did the right thing. Courts know we did the right thing because they wouldn't go near the issues on the merits. Richard was right about everything. And they found reasons to stay away from adjudicating. <coughs> and uh, somewhere down the line, the law, I think, will get put back where it ought to be. If, if and when it is, it will have more to do with this guy than any other single American citizen. So I, I know you paid attention to this. I know you appreciate courage that went into that, a commitment to principle, but uh, this particular state treasurer was put to a test uh, that many of his colleagues flunked, and few of his predecessors ever had to uh, confront. 
And uh, if you had any doubts, we have a great strength in the state treasurer who was answered during that experience. Uh, thank you for coming here to help our friends.